Name an effective political leader in history who couldn't speak well. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. There aren't any. Because when it comes to a degree, Freedom requires leadership, and leadership requires oratory. You have to speak to be heard. I have a dream. It's all about personal growth and guts. Never give in. Never, never, never. Welcome to Toastmasters on Purpose, How to Win Your Humor Speech Contest. We have, content, we have event, uh, programs all through the year on, on our contest, on our international speech contest, table topics, evaluation, and today is a humorous. So I want to welcome you. And first I'd like to uh, introduce myself. I'm Valerie Fuson. I'm a member of Toastmasters on Purpose. And I've been a member uh, since 1995. And I'm a member of three other clubs. What I'd like to do is introduce our other panelists. We're going to get to have evaluation panelists today. Gina Coates, would you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Gina Coates. I'm a member of three Toastmasters clubs, including which includes Top. And I've been a member for five years. And here you governor. And I enjoy attending and being a part of contests. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce Virginia Bosserman, our other panelist. Hi, I'm Virginia Bosserman. I'm also a member of TOP. I'm the treasurer. So anyone who would like to join, I can take the payment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our vice president of membership is competing tonight. I'm also a member of two clubs in the North Division, uh, Club Toast at UL, which is where I work, and another one in Gurney, where I live, is uh, with who's talking. Thank you, Virginia. And now I'd like to introduce our pan, our actually coaches. In the order that they signed up, I've got Garrett Gray. Can you stand it? Please? Turn around, please. Okay. Thank you. Vincent Clare. Dan Ekstrom. Mirage Sham. participants so but believe me just being in this room you will learn a lot about the humor speech contest and how to come about and writing a better speech and so forth I was told one time that winning the humor speech contest was harder than winning the international speech contest well I tend to disagree with that I think it's a lot harder to win the international speech contest. Now, maybe I say that because it was my first attempt to win, to enter the humor speech contest. 
but that speech of mine, I was thinking about it for over 20 years. And I finally got, said, okay, let's write a speech and see how, how, how well it plays. Now, there, there's a lot of advice that people would give you, but I'm gonna have a handout for almost everyone in the room, but especially the speakers, is that number one, says you have to practice your speech like you know it backwards. Not that you can say it backwards, but you know it enough that you have key words in it that you don't forget your speech. Because having a blank stare is not that good. One other advice a world champion of public speaking gave me before the humor speech contest was, Bob, try giving a five minute speech in seven minutes. Think about that. What would happen if you gave a five minute speech in seven minutes? You have to talk so slow. Or would you give a punchline and wait for the laughs. The worst thing a speaker can do is to talk over the laughs. Now, I'm going to show you the division speech contest that I was in. And I'm going to admit to you, I didn't win the contest. Well, if I didn't win the contest, how was I able to win the district? Well, the, I eventually, I tied for first place. And the tie-breaking judge put me in second place. But the first place winner couldn't attend the conference. So I got a reprieve. But I also found out is, okay, why wasn't I the out-and-out -out winner? I had the best speech. But you know, when I looked at the video, and watching video of your former speeches, or when you're giving a speech, try to get it videotaped. That is the only way we can improve. See, when Toastmasters, they tell us, give a manual speech and go on to the next speech. But to really get better and to improve, give that same speech over and over and over. And it wasn't my intention when I was told that I was going to be at the conference, the division governor at the time said, hey, Bob, you know what? Why don't you, I can set you up at various clubs and you can come and give that humor a speech. So I thought, three, four clubs, that wouldn't be bad. She set me up for 16 clubs. <laughs> but I went to all those 16 clubs and I found out that, man, I knew that speech inside and out. And I knew when an evaluation that I got was good and it was bad. The biggest laugh I had in both contests, one club told me, oh, you can't use that. You shouldn't use that. But luckily, I didn't take their advice. <laughs> I did go to one club, and not one person in the room laughed at my <laughs> speech. <laughs> It was a Monday morning at 7 a.m. That might have been the reason. But you cannot get discouraged if you give your speech and you think you have a very good speech and then do something like that. One thing that I could bring out to you is that hang on and select a mentor to help you. Practice that speech. The, the more people who can help you. Now, I got a handout on six steps to winning that humorous speech. 
And then I also have, how did I get feedback when I went to all these clubs? I used my own form. I gave it to every member in the group and I asked them to evaluate me. I got a lot of good information from that speaker, from the evaluations. Some of the evaluations, but most of the time it, it, it was helpful to me. So at the, and one of the things is how, the speech was at seven o'clock, or no, three o'clock in the afternoon at the district finals. When was I making changes to my speech? When do you think? 2.30. Around 2.30, 2 o'clock. <laughs> right after I picked my ballot and I found out I was number one. Now I ad libbed something when I was number one in the area contest, which I won. So I included that. And then the world champion of public speaking told me to do five minutes and seven minutes. So I got rid of one scenario and was able to add the extra time in the pauses. Incidentally, I talked about my ex-wife. At the time, at the time, I still were saying that we were still married, and it was that. Well, let's let's look at the video from the okay the division. It's just it's going. Here. Okay, I'll need somebody to help me come oh, back sure. here to keep on. Uh, I'll it's get you going. Here. It's just going to be a little snippet of the beginning, a little snippet of the middle, and at the end. And this is going to go in both in both contests. And I believe me, looking at a winning speech to me doesn't tell you much. You have to look at the, the before and then the after. That tells you a whole lot. So let's just go ahead of the same division. Start with the division opening. Thank <laughs> you. 
and then then our club members will give suggestions and then anyone else in the audience if they have any suggestions, okay? So let's start with the first person who signed up. Garrett. And that is... Garrett. 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 Okay. Um, when we're, are we going to introduce people as if they're actually at the conference? Uh, at least with the title it's and just the name a... Uh, well, no, it is. It just, it, it's a length of time. I don't think we need, really need to do that. Let me just get what Garrett wrote. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Okay. Or maybe you want to tell the audience what your synopsis of your speech is. Sure, not a problem. The synopsis of my speech is just a bad day in my life and strange events in it. Can I ask the title? Busted. Thank you. And then you said you're looking for a better opening and a better close. Right. So let's start with the opening. Sure. Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. A few years ago, I worked for the wrong boss, Mr. Wright. He made Donald Trump look understanding. <laughs> he was such a control freak that he would call the office at 6 a.m. every day on the dot to make sure you opened up on time. Now my engineering office, to say it's messy, would be a massive understatement. I've seen tornado aftermaths with less clutter. There's plans, periodicals, and papers everywhere. The only time my company's gone paperless is in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> the, any suggestions on? I had two. Sure. Well, uh, wait, uh, three actually. Um, it seemed like uh, you weren't quite sure how to use the speaking area, so it seemed like you placed one foot out and then the other foot out. Sure. Um, I didn't see anything with your volume. And I thought that maybe the Donald Trump reference, maybe instead of just the look understanding, is to pick someone really that you're going to get a big recognition factor, such as he makes Donald Trump look like Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. you know, something that's really, you can, everybody can identify. Um, and it, the only other comment was that I liked the humor but it seemed as if it was delivered as a series of one-liners, which is one of the things that actually they have in the guidebook, and, and it's very strange because it's a contest book, but it does point out, try not to deliver your humor as a series of one-liners. Okay. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna build on Gina's, that yes, on the, on the judging, everyone needs to remember that it's still a speech needs to be have a beginning, a middle, and a conclusion. And the the thing that they will take off for is if it's just a series of jokes. It, it sounds from the beginning that there's a good story in here. You caught my attention, and I think it's something that the whole audience can relate to. Everyone has had a job, everyone has had a boss, some were good, some were bad, some we have favorite names for. Um, so I think that that's good. You got everyone's attention. And as Bob said, you did start off with a joke, and then very shortly after that, you had another one. So you got a couple of laughs right away. I think if you may possibly start it in one spot, and then move as your introduction, and then move to another spot and start telling your story, so that you would have maybe different segments for different parts of your story. Uh, I just think that when you you look forced in telling the story, I know it's kind of hard sometimes when you're thinking of doing bits and pieces of it. So you just you <coughs> seem like you were forced to <coughs> the humor. I noticed one thing is when you said fellow Toastmasters, they kept your arms up and then went into your talk. When you do the introduction like this, you 
lower your arms slow motion to your side. Then you can put your arms up if you're going to do any type of gesturing that fit the speech. And the best way to do that is give your speech in front of a mirror a number of times and automatically your gestures will, co will coordinate to what you're saying. And then is busted. You should have some kind of information as to why, why what's that title? You didn't say what you did, you just said you had a boss who would bust anybody. So if saying, but that's not what your title was. Your title said busted. So something to do over there, what did you get busted with? You need to bring that out in the beginning part. You, you, it was too long how you came out and then do it. Maybe you were going to put it in later as doing how the title comes in. And the same thing, the ending, it's like anything. You need to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And everything should tie into the speech, to the title. I, I had an additional comment, thank you, Bob. The, the, um, one of the quickest ways to connect with an audience is to ask a question that's going to be rhetorical, but people are going to identify with. For example, for people who have seen Prez Vasilev's speech, he just opened up and said, have you ever done anything stupid? And everybody, you know, chuckled to themselves. And with this, it seems like a great question would be, have you ever had a crummy boss or whatever adjective you want to put in there? And you will connect with the audience right away. And then to Bob's point, how can you work in busted? Or do you want to change your title to be that right after that you can say, and is it, and have you ever had a, you know, whatever, with that bad boss, it's even worse. And then whatever your story is, because then you connect it to the title right away, and I think a question helps break the ice. Maybe you're the best boss in the world. <laughs> and do a, a take off on that, and then say, I have a boss that would never win that title, even if he was the only one in the contest. I think what you were doing, also doing is you were dramatizing it right away. I think if you first start out with a conversation with the audience, and then when you get into telling the story, because you're setting it up originally, yes. so have that as a conversation. And then when you're telling your story, then you can play with the vocal variety. But you started out right away with, with playing with the audience. I think starting out first with a conversation. Get rapport with us first and then go into the, the dramatics of the story. Okay. Now you mentioned... Okay. I just want to say that I really liked Gina's suggestion of the rhetorical question mm -hmm. as an opening. I think that would probably be your most effective type of opening, such as, how many of you have ever had a bad boss? Well, mine was so... something like that. So you're close. Can you give us? Uh, yeah, it won't make any sense. I, didn't, I thought I was going to give the same the whole speech from front. So it refers to a scene after that, after the opening. And uh, well, just set it up for us, and then. Okay. Well, uh, early in the story, I'm I wake up late, <laughs> and I am the one to open up the office at 6 a.m. So I jump out of bed and. I proceed to drive like a maniac, and I come to a red light. So this is the beginning. I pull up to this red light. I look at my watch. No cop, no stop. I ran every red light to get there on time. Wow. Okay, so that's that's in the early in the story. And I get there on time. Okay. But through this series of snafus, I get nabbed by the police of Piatone. And when I get to my office, there is, well, uh, they mistake me for a thief in the neighborhood. And I get, so I get pulled into the office, by, uh, they, I get nabbed into the police station, and they let me go, because uh, they find the real thief. So at the end, uh, they let me go, they get my car out of impound, and I jump back into the car, and I, 
and I realized I've been held for over 24 hours, <sighs> almost 24 hours, <laughs> and I realized I'm in hot water because they didn't give me my one lousy phone call. Oh. So I panicked and I realized I gotta hurry back and explain to my boss, not Mr. Wright, my wife. <laughs> so I pull out onto the road, I pull up to that red light. I look at my watch. I think I'll sit this one out. Oh, Madam Toastmaster, that's or Mr. Toastmaster. But it, you can't get it from the beginning. Bob, yeah, why, don't we have them give, why don't we have them give their their? I think we'll have enough time to do it. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need to hear the whole thing. Well, could I make one Start small off. request? Could, could I move you aside? That's why my staging was off a little bit. I didn't want to turn my back to you, Bob, so I apologize. I don't want to... That's all right. Okay. Can I make one more feedback? I'm not sure how agile you are at changing what you're doing. Sure. You sounded angry in the beginning. And I okay. think if you sound more like this guy, you know, yeah. more fun, like, more like right. like you're above it than angry, okay. then people sure. will be more on your side. I think sure. You're telling the story. Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters and guests, have you ever had a horrible boss? Well, I worked for a horrible boss, Mr. Wright. He made Donald Trump look like Mr. Rogers. <laughs> he was such a control freak. He would actually call in at 6 a.m. every day on the dot to make sure you arrived on time. Now, to say my engineering office was messy would be an understatement. I've seen tornado <coughs> aftermaths with less clutter. <coughs> There's plants, periodicals, and papers everywhere. The only time my company's ever gone paperless is in the bathroom. <laughs> One cold October morning, it was my turn to open up the office on time. My alarm clock overslept. <laughs> Irresponsible. <laughs> I dashed out of bed. I threw on my clothes and I jumped into my car. Why is it when you're in a hurry, you always seem to hit every red light imaginable? And I pulled up to that first red light. I looked at my watch. No count, no stop. I ran every red light in Piatone to get there on time. I screeched into that parking lot. I bolted through the front doors. I hurled over papers, and I grabbed an already ringing phone. Guess who? <laughs> right engineering. Our customers, our, our competitors are wrong. How may I help? <laughs> now, Mr. Wright bashed, my, bashed me for answering the phone seven seconds late. <laughs> and I felt this cold wave of air behind my back. That's strange. I saw the giant office window completely busted out. My laptop was missing. M Mr. Wright, we've been robbed. Mr. Wright said, to call the police immediately. I did. They said, leave the building immediately. And you know what I did? I left the building immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Moments later, two of Piatone's finest barreled into the parking lot, brandishing badges, waving gun arounds, and talking tough. But I knew better. The Piatone police are so inept, they make Barney Fife look like RoboCop. Their names, Officers Barnum and Bailey. <laughs> I thought, the circus must be in town. They sieged into the building. And moments later, Officer Bailey came out. He said the building was secure and to come back and identify the missing items. As I walked in, Officer Bailey pointed to all the papers everywhere. And he proclaimed, Man, they really ransacked this place. <laughs> I identified the missing items. Five laptops, four printers, and two Dr. Peppers. <laughs> There's one in every company. <coughs> then the 
and morning personnel trickled in. Officer Smith said, Mr. Gray, do you have any disgruntled employees? I said, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started to bash my boss about what a control freak he was. Officer Bailey stood there silently, and then he said, Mr. Gray, <clears throat> where were you last night? And do you drink Dr. Pepper? <laughs> what did I tell you? Inept. They're so inept, they make Honey Boo Boo look like Stephen Hawking. <laughs> so Officer Bailey made me go out to my car and pop the trunk. He took one look inside and said, I thought your office was messy. <laughs> <laughs> he then proceeded to rummage through my fishing rods, my fishing bait, my fishing tackle, to finally fish out a can of Dr. Pepper. I said, come on, officer. I was fishing all day yesterday. I got thirsty. Officer Bailey said, Frankly, Mr. Gray, your whole story sounds fishy. <laughs> and then he's told me not to move as he walked back to his car to run my plates. He even took the can of Dr. Pepper with him. He called it evidence. Five long minutes later, he exited his squad car, came back to me, and told me to put, turn around and put my hands behind my back. I explained he was arresting the wrong guy. And he said, Mr. Gray, our traffic cameras caught you running five red lights. <laughs> we got the right guy. <laughs> and then he slapped on those cuffs faster than a Kardashian can say, I do. <laughs> I was busted. They dragged me into the police station like a common criminal. There, they charged me with multiple counts of moving violations and held me on suspicion of theft. To add insult to injury, they put me in this tiny cell for over 22 hours with this scary tattooed behemoth named Snake. Turns out Snake and I weren't so different after all. I got busted for possession of Dr. Pepper. He got busted for possession of Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, they caught the real thief and let me go. They got my car out of police impound. And as I jumped in, I got scared. I was in hot water. I had been gone for almost 24 hours, and they didn't even give me my one lousy phone call. I had to hurry back and explain to my boss, not Mr. Wright. My wife! So I pulled onto that road and pulled up to a red light. I looked at my watch. I'll sit this one out. Mr. Contest Chair. <laughs> description of them. And 
a little bit more dialogue in the early part, when maybe when they first walk in. You know, are they cocky? You know, kind of show show that earlier. You did have some dialogue a little bit later. So those are my suggestions. Okay, I just have a few to add because we had some of the same ones. Um, I thought that in the beginning, as Val said, a little more acting out. Um, you went over and you hit an alarm clock, but then when you talked about you know getting out of bed and getting dressed, you just kind of went like this. So I would actually you know try to mess with your shoe and almost fall, you know, you know make it like you're uh, pulling on your pants in a hurry, because usually the hurrier you go, the worse it gets. Um, the other part, when you were on the phone with the police, and they told you to get out of the building, and you said you got out immediately, you really need to emphasize that. It's like, I got out of there immediately, you know, okay? Instead, you just, you moved and you said it, but you didn't really punch it. And the other thing that I noticed is that you hold your hands. When you're not making a specific gesture, you tend to hold them in one way or another. And so you might want to just put them down at your side so that when you are gesturing, they'll get more attention. Yeah, I had a couple other things to add to great comments. The, uh, I noticed the spacing as well. Uh, you started in the bedroom, and then when you were in, in your office, you went all the way back and reenact and, and made your workspace. It's actually the bedroom again. Mm -hmm. So I thought if you started in your bedroom at you know whatever that is stage right, and then you are in your car, and then when you're at work and you answer that phone, why not step forward and say you know hello you know because then at that point you're telling the story of that ringing phone and you're going to answer it. And then you'll be more uh, immediate with your audience, but you'll be in the right. You'll be in the workspace right there. And so, if you keep your spaces separate, but just move forward and backward within them, that might stop you from stepping on your bedroom or stepping on the space that was your car. Because when you start to reuse spaces, people remember the last thing you did there. And so, um, that was about it. I, I, I just noticed one grammatical thing where you said waving gun arounds, but I think you were just really into the story. And then I got the Mr. Rogers reference, and it's debatable whether people recognize Mr. Rogers or Mother Teresa more. And that was actually another person I was thinking of when I gave the feedback. Uh, so that, I thought that was great. I did not get the honey boo boo Stevie no, talking no, reference. I'm sorry. So she's you might she's not smart, and he's. Okay. Super smart. Okay. Okay. So okay. he's not. He's so some people okay. don't know. Who yeah. 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 So Albert Einstein might yeah. be better than yeah. Stephen Hawking, yeah. and then some other really yeah. accessible um, someone for so, so Gracie, uh, not being. Uh, you know, it's hard with TV characters because not everybody watches. But but uh, definitely, you know, some pop culture version of you know makes makes. I I don't want to say it. You know, uh, get into anything that could be. Uh, something that would be offensive to the audience, but just some something else that's uh, going to be references or more accessible. I have a couple. I use depth, too. Don't just use sideways. Use it in the depth, so this way you can place different locations. So when you use the car, the police, your car, yeah. have it on an angle, maybe, so that they're, in, they're looking into it, but you're still facing some of the audience. So that you're not sideways. Sure. So you want to have your audience here, and maybe they're you're flipping through the car here, so that you, you can still see your face. Okay. Good. I thought in the beginning your reference to that messy office. It uh, it played well in the other part of the story. So you need to put a joke together how, when you're mentioning the messy office. Yeah, we had a messy office. He times us on how long it takes us to do anything and doesn't give us any time to file anything. Because mm -hmm. no. remember, you're in a humorous speech contest, you're not in a truth contest. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can embellish the truth, you can add to it. No one needs to know. <laughs> okay? It'll be, you'll be able to time it the 
the when it's uh, posted. Oh, that's true. Yeah, the video. The minute we'll be able to get it for that. Right. Yeah. He's going to try and have the videos tonight. I'm going to have them posted up tonight. I'll have them private link tomorrow. I'll probably release them for general consumption after the division contests are taken care of because several of the people have already exhibited that they don't want their speeches to be made public until after the division contest. So that's what I'll do. It's a seminar to help people out, but I'll post it after the division contest. Private links will be made available to Bob and my fellow club members. You can email me or any of our club members to take a look at them beforehand. I'll probably have them up tonight. Okay. Next would be Lynn. Lynn's in The basis of her speech is the challenge of par parenting, and she's looking for help on timing for humor's impact and putting the audience at ease so they feel free to laugh. Okay. 25 years ago today, my husband Mike and I were traveling in Europe with a URL pass and a burn bomb travel guide. We were young newlyweds, and we had time, freedom, and adventure. But all that was going to change, because by the time we got home, I was pregnant. Nine months later, I'm holding, sitting in my hospital bed at Edward Hospital, holding my new baby. And I had this overwhelming feeling of possibilities for this child. This child could be great. This child could be an inspiration to everyone she meets. This child could be president of the United States. Two hours later, I am in a complete panic because I don't know how to take up the care of a baby. I don't know how to feed it. I don't know how to hold it. And I don't know how to change it and dress it. And I am certain that all the people that work at Edward Hospital notice how incompetent I am. And I'm afraid that they're going to not let me take my baby home. I don't know how exactly this would transpire. Maybe they would come up to me and say, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we couldn't help but notice that you're really inept. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've seen a lot of inexperienced moms come through here before, but you, you just seem hopeless. <laughs> Well, we were able to take our baby home. And from that point, it is game on. My husband and I are a team. I'm the quarterback, he's the captain. Our job is to move this child 21 years into the future as a healthy, happy adult, able to tackle the world on her own. She's just a little rookie. We, we're the veteran players. We need to protect her, show her how to play the game of life. The only trouble is I am just gripped with fear, and often hyperventilating. Mm -hmm. Feeding my fear is the knowledge that if I screw up, my kid's going to end up on a therapist's couch saying what a horrible mother I was. <laughs> oh, I could not. I could not bear the thoughts. Mm -hmm. So, ready or not, the game must go on. So let me recap for you our, our game, okay? First quarter, we suffer a three-year penalty for introducing a new rookie onto the team. <laughs> <laughs> the quarter ends with a few broken bones and illnesses that, hey, doesn't kick us out of the game. We're still in it. Second and third quarter, those quarters go pretty darn well. A lot less hyperventilating on my part. We notice the junior players pulling away from us a little bit. That hey, that's okay? It's okay. It's all age-appropriate behavior. Then we hit the fourth quarter, the teenage years. Oh my god, let me tell you, no parent ever wants teenagers on their team. These junior players 
They want all the rights and privileges of the veteran players and none of the responsibilities. <laughs> they want to roam all over the field, making up their own rules. We try to tell them, hey, you break the rules in life, you could go to jail or get a police record. Oh, but I'm happy to tell you all that we have made it. Our son is 21 years old, which means we are in the parental end zone. <laughs> and we declare victory. <laughs> After all, there's been no therapist and no police record. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chris. I'd like to go first, uh, Lynn. I thought you need to introduce some laughter in the beginning. So I, you can say about your honeymoon, the honeymoon ended when we got home. I was pregnant. And then you can say, and I had no idea how to be a mother. And then give some of your fictitious ways that you thought you could take care of a, of a little kid. He needs a diaper change, give him a diaper. Let him change it himself. Did you know we laughed at that? <laughs> <laughs> and then to, to more so, it almost like play the dumb blonde. When it, when it comes into the raising the kid, and then surprisingly, he did turn out okay. Yeah. Well, um, the, the thing is, though, it's not for lack of trying, right? I mean, you know, I take the, the, took it very seriously, so it's not lack of trying. I don't want to, um, you know, minimize the, you know, the, the situation. Because it's not a matter of not trying. It's a matter of being scared. That's really the theme. The theme is being scared. Right, but is that funny? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. Okay, yeah. So the, I think there's kind of two ways you can go with this. I noticed the Illini gear. And you can't, you know, you wore the, your, your shirt for a reason and you had the football for a reason. So I was looking for sports analogies. I was, when you said being a new mom, I was looking for fumble, you know, something that would convey more of when you're talking about being a team with your husband. So I liked that you had, let's move this baby 21 years, you know, instead of yards, you know, you said years. And I, I was waiting for more sports analogies that would support the story the whole way through. And I thought if there were more creative, um, frequent sports analogies that it would help further the, the, the way you started out. And um, I did notice something small was that you were holding the baby and then you gestured with the baby. So yeah. you started, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you, when you did that with the baby, it was kind of, oh, okay. So I, I wanted to see, you know, how could you, could you talk, you know, to them when they're 13 and then when they're 16, you know, they're up here, right? So, um, I, there were just things like that that the sports um, related that could that could translate into to fear, you know, the, the <laughs> penalty or maybe with hyperventilating, you wish you wish you could go to the sidelines and get your oxygen, right? Like a lot of these pro mm -hmm. players have oxygen at the sidelines. Um, and then just at the moment there where you mentioned that you were afraid is if you feel like you can't milk enough of the sports analogy out of the topic that you have is maybe it's a horror movie, you know, maybe it's something else. But but I think there's sports yeah. are so rich with things that can go wrong, you know, like you, mm -hmm. we talk about a, a fumbling. You felt like you were gonna fumble or you were gonna you know she was gonna get you're gonna pass an interception and he's gonna you know, do something bad or get in trouble with the law, that kind of thing. So end up in the wrong hands, right? So <coughs> it seems like there's a lot of rich Analogies mm -hmm. with sports. Yeah. I liked I liked the subject. I, I fumbled. Mm -hmm. I fumbled a lot. 
In, incomplete pass, mm -hmm. for one. They also got the eye formation, all kinds of stuff you could do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, I noticed. Saying, uh, and then all of a sudden, all my husband wanted was to do this huddle. <laughs> 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 You, you move a lot w with the same story. Move with a purpose. So I would say start with an idea and finish that idea. Then you can move to another spot. But you're, you're talking and you're moving at the same time with the same theme. And then you step backwards. You walk backwards. You can use the stage to walk to it um, like on an angle. Don't move backwards, because when you're moving backwards from the audience, a couple of things, your voice is going to diminish, and uh, it looks like you're getting away from the audience. You know, to us, it looks like you're, you're walking away from us. So be a little more firm around the stage, really <coughs> command the stage. At, there was a time when you said, um, I, was a I was a horrible mother. Move forward when you say that. So pause, move forward. I was a horrible mother. More emotion, uh, you know, that you really were, were panicked about it or frustrated about it. Show us a little more emotion. Mm -hmm. Your voice is pretty, pretty even. So show us some bursts of different emotions in it. You know, when were you frustrated? When were you scared? When were you uh, happy? Show us a little bit about that. And then when you're talking about the, the, the players, the junior players, again, uh, punch that out, the emotion, the frustrated. You know, they they want to be just like the senior players. I, you know, I can't believe that. You know, so you have that emotion, and I think if you, if mm -hmm. you put that throughout your speech, that will bring it to life. And remember, you're in a humorous speech contest. so. You want to develop a funny story. So, to make it funny, uh, the analogy would be great with mm -hmm. the sport, like football. Anything that, instead of being the mother, you're the coach. <laughs> you know, like, I tried to run my household as sport, so I was the coach. And then, what was your husband? Oh, yeah. I, I missed a few lines there. Yes, I was the quarterback and my husband was the captain. I guess we forgot to say them. No, you said it. No, you oh, said it. Yeah, 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 he did. Oh, okay. And okay. he was what? He's the uh, captain. I was oh, the quarterback. She did say it. You did. He said no. that. The captain of the team. What about the coach? Coach isn't on the field. Um, He's got yeah, the field. Okay. Okay. The coach could be a grandma. <laughs> then don't forget the owner of the team, too, who actually sets a final say. <laughs> All right, you give me a joke, I'll put it in. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a great analogy uh, with, the, with being a quarterback is, here's the snap to me. What am I going to do? What, what, what are we going to do? You know, because you, you had several stories where uh, the, the child years, and then something happens, and then the teen years, and something happens. So maybe those are plays, you know, mm -hmm. that you move down the field, and then it Talk gives goal. your speech some structure. Right. Yeah. You lost yard. You lost yardage when uh, you did this, and, and make it something yeah. funny. That, that you got sacked. You know, you're the quarterback, right? So. I have a comment. I was expecting a touchdown at the end, and I thought that would have been really great. Like, especially if you end it. Yeah. yeah, like especially if you uh, like spike it when you end up in knowing <laughs> that your kids yeah. end up in therapy. Yeah. That's, the That's what we all want. So I, I think that'd be really cool. Um, I had a comment also. You know, it just reminded me what you were talking about with the huddling. You know, you could do some motions like that. My husband and I huddled together. All right, what are we gonna? What's the next play? You know, ah, we're gonna try this in the early years. Next year's adolescent. My husband. There are no players already. <laughs> I, I think you have to introduce the football theme, okay, because mm -hmm. you came out dressed and you had the football, but you never actually 
introduced it, okay? And it was a little confusing because you were using the football as a baby, and then later you were gesturing with the football, and, and so if that's the baby, oh my gosh, I'm going to drop the baby. <laughs> so, so then I, I think that when you talk about um, that you felt incompetent, that, that the nurses were going to notice how incompetent you were, that you could, you could say something in there uh, about that you and your husband got together, and he was, we, we know football, so we're going to approach this like a football team. He's in the captain, and I'm the quarterback in it. And then you can start using all your football analogies after that, because I kept waiting for your son to play football and to be the captain of a football team or get a football scholarship to U of I or you know something. Um, so you might have people in the audience wondering why it's not coming up more or being explained, and then they're distracted and they're not laughing. Um, and in the beginning, when you're going through that part with the nurses, that's where you could really use some vocal variety. You know, they're going to see that I totally incompetent. I might even drop the baby. You know, something. You know but really emphasize it and because you, you just said it like you would have a normal conversation, not like you were panicked or that you were really scared. So you really need to put that emotion in there. And the thing about comedy is you have to sort of do it a little over the top, okay, so that the people in the audience really get it. Okay, so a little more than you would normally do it if you were telling the story to a friend that really overemphasize it. So they were good lines, you just didn't punch them. And most new moms cry a lot. Oh yeah. What? And <laughs> there's still crying. There's no crying. Yeah, I was just thinking that. The Tom Hanks was about yeah, the baseball. There's, no there's no crying in football. Yeah. I had a comment just on the ending where you're you're in the parental end zone. I thought that was a great I like the the sound of that, that you're in the parental end zone. Um, maybe you can take that somewhere where, um, you know, Virginia, you had mentioned that, well, if the football is the baby and you're going to actually use it that way, you can still, you know, carry that out. Even at the end, where I think somebody mentioned spiking the football, well, you can have at the end, as an example, you're in the parental end zone, you've done your job, you've, you've won this parenting game, you, you, you got it, you know, to where you wanted it to be, and, and you're excited, and, but instead of spiking, you're, 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 you're 21, but you'll always be my baby, you know, and you don't spike it, because everybody still thinks that's the baby, and so I think that's a neat way to, to drop them off where you picked them up, where, the, where you don't know what the football's about, and the first thing you do is cradle it like your baby, and at the end, you don't spike, you, you know, you go back to the, especially to if you become analogy. a grandma, because yeah. then you got it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I think if, if that's the baby, you need to, like, when you want to gesture, you've yeah. got to hold it yeah. somehow. If you're not going to put it down, it's always got to be the baby right. left. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to gesture, like, you know, like with the ball in your hand or like this. So hold it like that and then you can gesture. And then, of course, at the end, you can always say, is the game over? He's 21. <laughs> yes, no way. There's, I guess there's something called overtime. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a pen and paper to write. It's all video. It's all video tape. You'll be able to see it. Like, he has a degree. He doesn't have a record, uh, and uh, no tattoos or something. Like that. <laughs> Happy and healthy. Right? Is the game over? Game over. No. Play another season. <laughs> over time. They come back. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, I should mention that we have sweets there, and it is. Uh, I baked the cheesecakes this afternoon. Ooh. Is that cherry? and apple cheesecake. Wow. And that came from a recipe I got from my ex-mother-in-law. <laughs> I, okay. I brought it to one of her cakes to a Toastmaster function, and then she 
I came back and says, can you bake me three more? And she said, no. Here's the recipe. <laughs> so you can get up as we're talking and then okay. and get some. I thought instead of rather having us take a break, we now can we spend more time with our Take about five minutes. Five minutes to yes. change that? Five minutes just All so right, that I can. Let's do a five minute break. You can use the. Name an effective political leader in history who couldn't speak well. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. There aren't any. Because when it comes to a disease... Freedom like requires this, leadership, no and leadership leader. requires oratory. You have to speak to be heard. I have a dream. It's all about personal growth and guts. Never give in. Never, never, never. Welcome back, everyone. Next up for help is going to be Dan. Okay. We're, we're missing. Yeah. When they get started, they got to get back on time. <laughs> Shall I start then? No, uh, wait, wait for the evaluators. Give the bell's right outside the door. You want to call? I don't know where you're going. We're starting. <laughs> Sorry. They're coming. Well, let me read what you do. The speech, the basis of the speech is his birth and that he is looking for a better closing. Oh, she can't get in. Sorry. Okay. Gina. Where's Gina? She's right back there. Right back there, okay. Okay. So. okay. Everybody's liking the cheesecake, Bob. Everyone's mm -hmm. loving mm -hmm. the cheesecake. And how's that for a presenter? Now bring the dessert to a giant. Oh. You're quite a catch. I know you have a cheesecake. I'm my mirror and you put a cheesecake. Turn that thing around, let's see it. Turn it around. I'm just going to leave it run as unedited. I think we got some good comedic relief in here. <laughs> Let's just get started, please. You have the floor, Dan. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. I have a question before I start. How many of you were born? Anybody <laughs> <laughs> here not born? I don't see any hands. That's good to know. My guess is that when you were born, you did what the doctors told you to do. That is, you came out quickly because they needed to go somewhere else, probably on vacation. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I've always been a bit of a rebel. I made it hard, and I apologize. Let me go back in time just a few minutes. These are my parents. <coughs> my mom, she's probably about 21 in that picture. And that's my dad, shortly after Korea, came back out of the Marines. They look like really nice folks. And to some people, they are. Don't be fooled. <laughs> <laughs> they conspired to commit a terrible crime against me. With the help of a physician. Doctors are sworn Hippocratic Oath to do no harm. They did terrible harm to me. You see, for about nine months, I was hanging out with my mom. Everything was good. I floated around. She took me to the store, took me to the park. She sang to me. She played music. I was reading books. Everything was good. And everything was comfortable. You hear a lot of talk in Toastmasters. You hear a lot of talk in 
that Tony Robbins, uh, John C. or Maxwell, get out of your comfort zone. Do those things that are, you know, challenge you. Don't be comfortable. You know what? I liked being comfortable. It was good. It was good. So then one day, though, they decided they were going to take me out of that comfort zone. And so what happened is they went to a hospital. The doctor met my mom there and said, Gee, lay down here. We're going to take care of this. We're going to get it out for you. Easy as pie. Most babies get in the tunnel, drop down. Everything's fine. If there was no way there to catch it, you'd land on your head, right? <laughs> Not me. If I had dropped out like that, I'd have landed right here. They call that a breech birth. Anybody here a breech birth? I didn't think so. <laughs> Most people don't even know what a breech birth is. I'm here to tell you, I'm it. <laughs> I might be the only one in history because I haven't found anybody else yet to admit to it. Maybe I'm just the only one who's Anyway, the reason I was a breech birth was because of this. At the last minute, I turned. Why did I turn? Because I didn't want to come out. I was very comfortable. So here I am. I'm in there, and I'm holding on to those walls with all my might. And I hear the doctor going, OK, Gene, get ready. Here we go. Breathe, Gene. <sighs> Push, Gene. <clears throat> Breathe, Gene. <sighs> Push. <clears throat> and I'm like, boom. What's going on here? I don't like this a bit. And I'm feeling it, and I'm feeling it, and I don't like this at all. I breathe, push. Time goes on, and I'm getting kind of pushed a little more, and pushed a little more. And after, oh, now I should tell you, that started on January 7th. I didn't come out until January 9th. <laughs> so we were at war for a long time. Time. Sure, there were some truces in there, a little bit, some ceasefires, but by and large, it was just an ongoing battle. Dan, you got to come out. No, I'm not. So I'm in there, and I'm holding on for dear life, and after a while, I start wearing out. There's two big Goliaths out there trying to get me. I'm staying in here, and I'm just a little bitty baby, but I start to lose my strength. I'm getting tired. After a while, I feel this cool air. <laughs> right here. What is that? And I hear the doctor, gee, I think he's getting close. I might be able to see his head. Let me get down there and take a look. I see him. I see him. What does he look like? Ooh. He looks like a lawyer. <laughs> a lawyer. What are you talking about? Well, I see an ass. <laughs> myself, and I'm kind of like, I'm going to give him, give him a little shot. <laughs> gotcha, doc. Okay. My mom says, doctor, let me see him. Get a mirror. Nurse brings him a mirror. He holds it up so she can see him. He doesn't look like a lawyer. He just takes after my husband's side of the thing. <laughs> anyway, I lost the battle. Out I came. 30 hours of hard labor. Thus the title of my speech. Well, when I got out, the battle I thought was over, but it really, the worst was yet to come. Because what happens when I get out, first thing they do, the doctor, you know, they smack you to wake, make you breathe. Well, he didn't know because of all the sweating and the fighting and the, I was all swollen and bruised. He doesn't know which is my face and which is here. So he just smacks me here and he smacks me here just to make sure he got the right end. <laughs> I was breathing then. And the doctor looks at me and goes, Gene, I gotta tell you, the kid's got a great smile, but his breath is terrible. <laughs> I'm not sure he got, got it right then. And finally, I look around, and this is where the worst part was coming. He says, Nurse, get his temperature. Well, this woman appears in front of me. She's holding this little wand thingy with a little silver around the end. She goes, Turn over. I'm like, what? <laughs> Oh my God, what is that? Doctor, 98.6. Good. Good. What's good? I don't like this a bit. All right. A little while later, they bring in this guy. This guy right here, he'd been out in the hall practicing the scissors for 30 hours. <laughs> Doctor, my turn now. 
It is. Come on in, Bob. What is that? I eat from that. I need that. Don't take that away. That's where I get my food. <laughs> Gone. Worse was still to come. That same lady with that little wandy thing hanging, she comes in. She's holding this machete or a switchblade or a big axe or something. And she comes walking in and she's got this gleam in her eye and this nasty smile. She goes, it's time. I said, it's time for what? She goes, I'm like, what? <laughs> it's time for your circumcision. <laughs> no! <laughs> Done. Now, I didn't want to live anymore, really. This was <laughs> Why bring me out here just to do this to me? This is horrible. And women wonder why we're so obsessed with that. There's one reason right there. Anyway, I ended up surviving it. And you may think that I spent way too much time thinking about myself back when I was being born. And I really didn't think about how much I had put my mom through with those 30 hours of labor. But I was just a little kid. And I really didn't get over my anger probably till about five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it finally dawned on me, you know, I have to give him credit because if I hadn't gotten out of my comfort zone, well, now I'm almost six feet tall, kind of 200 pounds. My mom's like about like this. And if I was still there, oh, that wouldn't be good for either one of us. Thank you, Mr. Chester. Stay up. Stay up. Dan, here's a... Uh... You mentioned that you wanted a, a better ending. Uh, I would would have uh, eliminated some of the other stuff and say, and that's why I always do everything feet first. Oh yeah, that's good. And end that way. And then maybe you could make a reference to that. You 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 always have 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 the urge to jump in feet first. You know. Or, Something like that, every and, and and then tie it up with that. And if you end, end with that, then the people laugh because yeah, that's how you came into the world. My original ending was, and that's why I never wanted to leave my comfort zone again. And we were looking for a, a, a big, little bit of more of a punchline. Mm -hmm. I'll start. Um, so thank you. I saw your speech yesterday and at the area contest, and so it's interesting to see um, it again. And uh, I have just a few notes here. One was um, you had some lead-ins. It seemed like you were a, less, a little less in the flow with the content this time, and it seemed like there were a couple of things that you sort of went back and kind of revised and said, oh, what I needed to tell you was this. But there were, aside from that, which is just kind of practicing your material and getting comfortable, there were a couple of spots where you said, well, what happened is, it, it would be good if you just said what happened. Um, and there were a couple of spots where you said, I'm like and like, and she goes, versus, you know, and I felt this, versus I, it, I'm like. Because it's babe. more slang, right, but it's more slang. And then like, she goes, versus she said. Um, and. One thing that I really liked, um, I just had two other things. One thing I really liked when I saw you last night, and I didn't see as much of it this time, uh, one of the other folks at the speech contest, we were both chatting, and she said, he reminded me of Andy Rooney. And, and the part that reminded me of, the, not to compare you with Andy Rooney, but the part that got the most laughs at the other uh, contest when you did it was that you had this refrain, and you said, uh, you know, they were pulling me out. Wait a minute, I don't like this at all. And it's like when you got into that mode, people started laughing because you had just done a great setup. And so it seemed like whenever there, you know, the, the thermometer, whoa, that was my temperature. Wait a minute, I don't like this at all. Hey, that's not fair, getting the guy back there. You know, stuff like that. It seemed like when you went into that little mode where it was like, the injustice of it all, you changed your voice, mm -hmm. and people responded to that. So you changed your voice over when you had some funny content. Um, I did email you today, I saw your, and so that, that other ending, 
that I had shared with you. I don't know if you saw your email. I did. Okay. I did. So yeah. So the other one was about how to make it seem like there's the doctors getting called into a, a multiple birth delivery, and you know you're. Uh, so now it's like, ha ha! I'm I'm resting comfortably in my mom's arms, and you go get out of your comfort zone, doc. You know. And, I was a little worried about time. Yeah. 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 So. Um, Something to think about, like I noticed you cut the part out about your father waiting with the cigar, so that you know gave you a little bit of time. You had that in your other version. You said my dad's been waiting there for thirty hours. He's waiting to light that cigar, and you know when dads used to wait in the waiting room, you said he's waiting with this cigar. So I noticed you cut that out. So see where right, see where you are with your time. Yeah, the joke would be on there. If you really wanted to honor me, you would have let the other end. <laughs> so there's, yeah, it seemed like the comfort zone. It seemed like it would be interesting if this doctor who'd been giving you all this, this hassle and his staff, if he's got to go deal with something uncomfortable now. And, and you, you kind of acclimate because you're nuzzled with your mom. And, you know, I just thought that would be an no, interesting way to... No, we still continue to fight, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I saw yours yesterday too, and it was uh, a lot more succinct yesterday. Uh, today it looked like you were uh, uh, just trying to put it together. Uh, yesterday it really flowed really well. Uh, today you had a longer setup, and I, yesterday you had humor quicker. So if you can remember you know, how you started yesterday. Um, also, you spoke more in the first person as a child more yesterday. Today you were more like telling the story. Um, mm -hmm. Yesterday you were that baby. And you also held on to the sides longer and you were fighting harder. Mm -hmm. And that was hysterical. So I think if you can bring that back, that, that fight, that long fight. And um, I did like your father waiting with the scissors, I like that. that I'm <laughs> no, yeah. practicing with right? the scissors, right? <laughs> so that, and you got out of your, your pose, and you said, my dad's in the waiting room, and all this stuff happened, and then you said, no, you know, back to the birth, and then you got in the exact same spot, and without a, a beat missed, it was a really neat way of cutting to what your dad was doing, and then cutting back to you. And the <laughs> yeah, so, so get back into the baby uh, format. Channel your inner baby more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was really, really fun. Okay. I just had one thing to add. You might want to get your pictures enlarged. It's going to be difficult for people further back to see. As the venues get larger. As the venues get larger. Or use a slide projector. Well, Something like just know. just quick. I've seen, I've seen describe, people blow them up. Yeah. Yeah. Or right. describe them. Yeah. Let them picture in your own mind. Or le looking like, you know, my mom looked like Donna Reed and my dad looked like whoever, you know. Doesn't even have to be the mom and dad, the father's own. Okay. Next up is yeah. Amy Lee. Oh. You know, I think you're Amy. 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 Oh, I thought I was the last. Sorry, I need a little preparation. We, can, we want to change order, Bob, or? I'm going to change Yeah, I thought I was the last one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Okay. Red? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's 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 no, I know. Red is one at his club level, and he won at the area level. So his next spot will be competing at the division level. Okay. Sorry. of the speech, the gremlin creates problems whenever. Travel with my wife. And then how can I make everyone laugh as hard as they should? Better opening, better close. Take it away. Have you ever had a flight where everything went smooth? Have you ever had a flight with your wife where everything went smooth? <laughs> uh, Mr. Contest here, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and everyone who is here for a great laugh. Every time I go on a flight with my wife, I'm shaking in fright because nothing seems to go right. 
and we end up in a big fight. Do you know why? Because of him. Do you know who he is? He is the gremlin from the 1984 movie Gremlins. <laughs> Every time I go on a flight with my wife, he is there causing troubles, <laughs> causing all kinds of problems for us. For example, when we went on our honeymoon many years ago, the problems began. As soon as we stepped out of the house, everything was going wrong. The taxi was late. The flight was late. The honeymoon was late. <laughs> we had a great time in our destination, a lot of fun. Then it was time to come back. We get to the airport and what happens? Our travel documents are missing. He made them disappear. I could not find my ticket to come home. We had to buy a brand new ticket for both myself and my wife at full price. He did that to us. A few years later, it was time for us to go to Orlando on our vacation. I was thrilled like crazy. I was going to see the mouse for the very first time. I couldn't wait. We get out of the house. And the troubles began. We get to the airport. The flight is delayed. We get to our destination. Our luggage is delayed. As a result, our vacation is delayed. Why? Because of my friend. We didn't get our luggage for two days until we were into the vacation. The whole time I was at Disney World, I kept thinking, what happens if the luggage comes here after we've gone back home? <laughs> what happens to the luggage? So of course, a few years later, <coughs> when my wife and I were planning on going to India for my sister's wedding, I said, Charu, we cannot fly together because the gremlin is going to be with us. He is going to cause all kinds of problems for us. I can't go. You mean you want me to go to India without you with me on the plane? 8057.37 miles away to help your parents and your sister get married. What do you think? Okay, I guess I don't have a choice. We'll go together. It's fine. I'll figure out a way. So, of course, we flew together. The day of the flight, she is happy as can be. We are going together. I am as terrified as you could expect. I don't know what's going to happen. He's going to strike. Fortunately, from Chicago to Amsterdam to Bombay, everything goes smoothly. Absolutely no problems at all. It's time to come back. She is thrilled. I am terrified. We are going together. Bombay to Amsterdam. Flight goes smoothly. I could get used to this. There is no problem. Maybe we have broken the curse. Not so soon. Amsterdam to Chicago. We had to go from Terminal 1 to Terminal 2 on a shuttle train. I get on the shuttle with the luggage and he closes the door behind me. I am in the shuttle. She is behind me. Outside the train. 
with the travel documents. <laughs> Large airport. Lots of people. No iPhone 6. How am I going to get in touch with her? Train goes, terminal 1 to terminal 2. I'm here, she's there, I can't see her. Should I go back? What if she's on the next train? Should I wait? What if she's waiting? So of course I decide to go back. And I see her going on the next train. Oh my goodness. Now, dilemma again. Do I go back and teach her? What if she's on the next train saying I'm not there? What should I stay here? So of course, I do the thing and I go back. And right there, she's not there. What happened? Did she go shopping? Or did she take the next flight back to Chicago? No Murad, I don't have to worry about anyone. Or are we separated? Wouldn't <laughs> that be great? Not so easy. So of course, for half an hour, I go back and forth, back and forth, really stressed. I don't know what's going to happen. Will I lose my job if I cannot go back to Chicago? I, I finally decide to go to the terminal, to the check-in counter. And she's there waiting for me. I knew logic would finally dawn on you. I would be waiting for you over here. What were you doing? Shopping? <laughs> we did get back to Chicago. So now you're wondering, did we ever fly back together? Yes, we did. But he would never attack. Why? Because our children were with us. And he is afraid of children. <laughs> he cannot strike when the children are around. So he is waiting for the children to move out, <laughs> and we are empty nesters, so he can strike again. So my fellow Toastmasters, <coughs> the next time you are on a flight, think of the sight of me in fright. But you will be free, because he is waiting for me. <laughs> if you start a little bit louder at yeah. the beginning. Okay. And the you said the mouse. I don't know. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Yeah. I would say yeah. Mickey Mouse, yeah. not just okay. mouse. Uh, okay. okay. Mouse. Sure. And it was fine. The mouse. Like, the mouse? Yeah. yeah, everybody knows the mouse. He said this. He said it. Yeah. So yeah. I think maybe. That's fine. So um and if you can maybe name your wife, describe her a little bit. Uh, but I, I was confused at first because I didn't know if this was you or if this was you at the beginning. So if you kind of describe who she is and uh, you know, let us know a little bit more about her. And then I thought when you said, um, I don't know if she went back, uh, not so easy, I think you could say, I wasn't that lucky. Okay. Emphasize that okay. illusion. Um, and then I liked that you had the exact mileage. That, that was nice. Yes. A nice touch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so that's about all so I have. Thank you. Uh, it was very enjoyable. I especially liked the way you uh, mapped out the stage and, and moved as you were changing venues. Uh, that was very clear. It was very easy to understand. I think, again, that picture is going to be too small yes, okay. for people to see. So I would get a, maybe a poster size, and you could 
have it rolled up and inside your jacket, and then when you take it out, you can unfurl it, um, something like that. Maybe have tape on the back and, and hang it or something like that. But you want everyone to see it because uh, if it's too hard to see, they won't get it. Um, but I did also like the fact that you kept referring back to it. You would actually look at it and point to it. So it was very clear what you were talking about. And I, and I loved the ending um, mm -hmm. because it was, it was almost reminded me of like a Dr. Seuss where it, it, it kind of rhymed and it, 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 it had a thing. It also had a conclusion. Yes. So uh, as far as it being a speech, it had a, a beginning, middle, and end. And so I think that that's going to be important. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I felt that uh, in, in addition, I'm going to call out some just unique things that I, I thought the opening and the, the close were pretty good. I think to um, to Virginia's point, you can if you can find a way to have an easel set up where you actually unveil the no gremlin one. so right for for effect, which is that this guy, this gremlin ruins okay. everything. Yeah. Then you can keep. Harking back to him, uh, some something like that. Yes. Um, one thing I thought that was interesting was, at fir I think at first it was plural gremlins, and at first, it, and then it was mostly one gremlin. But I, I thought it would be uh, good if you just said, "That gremlin made my documents disappear," you know, it, and have that be a refrain. The gremlin strikes again, you know. Okay. It was the gremlin again, you know, and I think think that would help. Um, there was one spot where nothing went wrong. It might have been neat if you had said, maybe that gremlin took a vacation, you know, as a way to like okay. explain what happened. Yes. Um, I like that you mentioned no iPhone 6. I think you could have just said, this was a time before cell phones, because everyone knows what that means. Yes. Um, I think that would be good at the beginning uh, if, it, if it ties in for before cell phones, if you got lost, you were really lost. Yes. Um, I, think I don't want to rub off the Android users. Right, yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> just, just to keep the branding out of it, people know. People say, what did you ever do before cell phones? So it's yes. become a phrase, the um, people before cell phones. Um, I think it would be neat if you called your children a talisman. He said, okay. but I had the secret talisman. I found out later, if I traveled with children, it, it warded off that that gremlin wouldn't come around. I, I liked it very much, and I like I I'll, just to Valerie's point, if your wife has a slightly higher pitched voice mm. and she's more like, now, come on, you know, something with the finger waving, and then you're just like, oh, honey, then, then you can tell from the voices who's who. Okay. But I liked that dialogue. Thank well. you. Very Thank much. you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Well, and yeah, um, I would say you said trouble, troubles began. I would say the gremlin struck. Right then. And then every time you repeat that, the gremlin struck again. Okay. And I like the idea, maybe the gremlin took a vacation. Don't say maybe. The gremlin took a vacation. That, that, that's the answer for, and you can, you'll get a laugh out of that okay. when you say that. <laughs> and then I think I would end the speech, you know, saying is you sound it. Travel with kids. Don't have any kids? Go to the website uh, rentafewkids.com. <laughs> okay. And end and that way. Okay. Thank you. That would be that <laughs> that would tie in uh, better. You found the solution. Now you're 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 saying no. I liked his ending. Yeah. Yeah. I like the ending. I mean the talisman yeah. thing was a neat add on. And then, but you said, but if you don't have kids, you know, or whatever, you know. Right, they're you looking for you. about if you don't have kids. Yeah. Okay. Think about what happens when you go on a flight. Mm -hmm. Think about me. Think about the sight of me in fright. But you will be free mm -hmm. because he is waiting. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Or he is following yeah. me. Or he is waiting yeah. for, for me. Right. Or he has it in for me. I've yeah. encountered him mm -hmm. so many times over there. I, I, I felt like I would buy him a ticket or something that he okay. had a ticket on his flight too. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Name the gremlin. Two people who were sitting here as alternates. 
we can actually have them do the same, but except we probably be here another hour. What time is it now? Nine o'clock? Ten after nine. How many alternates are there? Wrap up. One, two, three, four. Ask the people to raise their hands if they want to do it. Okay. Who would like who would like to do it? One. Two? Okay, just the one? Okay. Then no, you don't want to do it? You've changed your hair? You don't want to do it? Mm, I need a lot of work from what I got. Okay. <laughs> Let's uh, go with go. one more and shut it off at that point, I think, because it's... Well, then, uh, why don't you come on up? I have my division contest next Saturday, so... Yeah. Okay. I think you have to go around yeah, this way. Yeah, so. And then since I don't have a... Do you have a title on one of these sheets? No. There you go. Oh, Anyone yeah. wants to <laughs> Yeah. If you have to leave. Yeah. Yeah, if anyone needs to leave. Okay. <coughs> okay. And go ahead. Uh, Mr. Contest uh, Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests. Ding dong! The realtor and her broker buyers are five minutes early, and I'm not prepared. Already I've broken real estate rule number one. Be prepared for all surprises. Have you ever sold a house? It was my husband and my first time. And our very first showing is right now. <coughs> And our very first showing is right now. I've scrubbed. I've cleaned. And now this? My son's muddy socks? I shove them in the freezer! No self-respecting buyer's gonna look in there. <laughs> Ding dong! My two dogs and the neighbor's new pup are clamoring at the window. Yeah, I've broken real estate number number two. Remove all pets and accessories from home during showings. It was really a bad time for dog sitting. I hightail it down the hall, intent on removing the dogs from sight. When suddenly, my legs give out from under me and I fall, plop into a puddle of dog pee. My shorts cling to me like rubber cement. Ding dong, ding dong! The dogs are scratching at the window. What to do? I could go upstairs, change my clothes, but risk losing my potential life changers. Instead, I grab a sweater from the closet, tie it around my waist, herd the dogs into the lighted garage, and open the door to let my buyers in. Welcome. The realtor presses his business card into my open palm and ushers in a 30-something young couple, disheveled looking, with four young children. I'm sorry to put you out waiting so long. No problem, said the young mom, tucking her baby boy underneath her arm. In that moment, I caught a whiff of something more putrid than anything emanating from my body. <laughs> Can I change him and stink up my house? <laughs> sure. <laughs> By this time, 
my clothes are itchy me all over. Feel free to walk through the house. I rush upstairs, intent on disappearing into the bedroom to change my clothes. When I happen to glance over my shoulder, look down the stairs. Oh no! The husband has unwittingly yanked open the garage door. Coconut, Lucky, and the new pup bound into the house, wagging their tails as fast as a metronome on steroids. <laughs> a children's chorus of screams echo through the house. Mom bursts through the bathroom with door, naked infant on shoulder. She sweats at my dogs. Get away, get away. Meantime, the realtor is playing interference between the kids and the dogs. I slide down the stairs, which is the fastest way for me to get there given my current physical condition. I am so sorry. At this rate, she's never gonna buy my house. She gives me a solid stare. Um, I've got an idea. Why don't you grab some popsicles from the freezer for the kids while I herd the dogs back into the garage? Oh, no. <laughs> the woman thrusts her baby boy into her husband's outstretched arms and stops off into the kitchen. All of a sudden, gross! I rush in after her only to find the young mom standing in a puddle of dog pee. In one hand, she's holding the frozen muddy socks. In the other, the box of frozen popsicles. Good grief. Let me make it up to you. In response, she tosses the box of popsicles in my direction. I jump back just in time to see the box of popsicles smack her husband in the forehead. The troop of adults and children walk out the door with me in fast pursuit. Wait, you didn't see the upstairs yet! <laughs> The car screeches away from the curb. And I guess I've learned my lesson. Real estate rule number three. Don't expect anything, and you won't be disappointed. Thank you. you're doing it and when you're having the conversations and you're two different people uh, I think you should pivot instead of actually running back and forth so what's this going to really look like just sideways oh, just, just sideways, sideways. No, 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 no. Just, just a little bit just just mm -hmm. pivot. It's like 45 degrees to because the you still the running them. the running back and Somebody forth. Show me. <laughs> so, like this. Okay, you're on the end. Do a little dance step here. Like this. Go. Just a little bit. Just a little bit like this. Oh, just, just okay. Okay. Yeah, because you were actually you're bouncing. You're just yeah. You're jumping. And it, it was yeah, like okay, jumping. stop. <laughs> okay. Okay. And just that, and then she's here. Right. Okay. And I think with the with the running, you just have to get it going. You don't have to keep it up. We know that you're 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 continuing um, to run. Um, 
it was kind of funny because I wrote, I wrote a note, did you ever clean up the puddle? So when you got to that, um, because that was, understand why that, was, that was bothering me all throughout yeah. the speech. <laughs> I was wondering yeah. about the puddle. So originally I had it, but it sounded kind of gross. Where I couldn't figure out what to do at that point. My shirts were already mm -hmm. dirty. I just wiggled back and forth, dried it off, got the sweater, put it around me, and went. But it sounds kind of gross, gross. Yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and she gets a double gross at the end anyway. The, the, the white. And you understand yeah. why um, about the little pup, the young pup, you know, was the one that was right around the house. The neighbor's pup was one right around mm -hmm. the house and peeing when they stood for he was marking. Okay. He was marking. Yeah, I would. Where do I sit? I would uh, end it with like something like, "Such a rude family." <laughs> um, you know, a rude, uncouth family. Oh, oh, a year <laughs> after they left the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then say. That's good. I'm glad they didn't buy my house or, or something <laughs> to that, you know. Can we have to I, three I, I, thought it, I thought it would be neat if, as they left, you just said, you haven't seen the upstairs yet. I thought it would have been neat if you had said, you haven't seen the great jacuzzi and the, and the uh, whatever, and the beautiful views from upstairs, you know, like something really, some real estate ease, you know. And the and the giant master bed, whatever it is. Well, I am a real so that it's, life, so that's right. So that idea. just seeing the upstairs, you're you're not super selling like you would be saying all this other stuff as they're leaving. That would be. You might want to say yeah. that in the beginning. What? Did when you, you start uh, talking license. about the rules, mm -hmm. you might want to say, "As a realtor, I should know better." The rule number one oh. is. Oh. As opposed oh. to just making yeah. like I'm a normal yeah. seller. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh. then it's even funnier. Because oh, it's yeah. kind of like the cobbler's children not having right. shoes. Right. And by the way, those are not the two real rules. The yeah, second yeah, one is, right. but the other two are Yes, yeah, right. But yeah. just let you know. <coughs> that would actually make it funnier. Yeah. 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 If we know you're a realtor and you know the rules and, and all this has happened. And, 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 and you, yeah. 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 So, so did, was it funny? Did you like it? Were there enough pauses and all that good stuff? I have a couple of comments. Yeah. Still? Okay. Uh, the, I'm going to tag on to the running in place. You did everything in the middle there, and you can use that running in place instead of running in place to walk fast to mm -hmm. another part of the stage. And, you know, I hightailed it. Doesn't mean you were running, you walk fast to another place. Um, some of the descriptions was kind of like reading a book. I write novels too. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you want to tell the story as it's happening, it's unfolding, and you don't need to describe. He um, took took her baby, baby uh, took her baby. She had oh, tucked it under her. She, arms. she tucked her baby under her. You know, had her baby tucked under. She could say she had. She was holding her baby in her arms. You, know, you don't want to use good words like fancier words. I don't know. You want to yeah, have like you're really telling the story. Like you're really right. talking. Conversational. Like it's yeah. conversational mm -hmm. instead of writing. Mm -hmm. We speak different yeah. than we write. And then her husband's outstretched arms. She, um, she, she, she tossed the baby in his arms. Mm -hmm. She tossed the popsicles. Uh, they, hit his, they hit her husband's forehead. Is that a snack? Or snack. But you had said, um, you, you added a couple other words in there. I saw him hit her, you know, just say, they hit his, his smacked his forehead. Mm -hmm. I saw this, I saw that. You're describing, you're there in the, in the moment. So I think you can leave out some of those words. And you had some internal dialogue. And you could say, I was thinking. And then say, the dialogue. Why wouldn't you just be stepping forward and talking to the audience with those things? That's Right, but you can say that you're thinking about this. Sometimes when you have it, you're, just, you're describing internal dialogue, that makes it funny too. Because mm -hmm. like we're listening to your conversation, your, your, what you're saying in your head. And again, you can do the, as a realtor, I know better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, you know. or turning to the audience at that time and taking a little step toward the audience, like, as a realtor, I should have known better. And then you step back into your story space. You know? mm -hmm. And you could end your speech with something like, let's close.
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you did not like the rules, the three thingies, the three rules? Yeah, the three. We like it. Yeah. 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 Close that way. I mean, yeah. With the third. Here's the here's the third rule, rule or three rules. Leave them laughing. Mm -hmm. Let's close. After you do the three rules, just your last two lines. As a realtor, let's close. I, I actually thought it might be interesting if you um, I'm left out of the house, though I can't close. If you want to leave didn't them you laughing, left my house? I mean, you're, you're so right. You didn't like my house. It might have been interesting if if they left and you said I I lost the sale, but I should have known the first, the third rule was yeah. you know, um, yeah, don't yeah. expect anything and you won't get anything. So I gave it I gave it my best last grab. Wait a minute, you haven't seen the whatever, whatever upstairs, and that could be your final punchline, where you're actually, whatever it is you wish they could have seen upstairs. That's cute, or, or you could yeah. say, the dogs don't stay with the house. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 right, right. The, the window tree would stay, but the dogs don't. Yeah, something like that. How about that. you yeah. just shout, yeah. is something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to thank our panelists, the members of Top Toastmasters. I would be hoping I would be talking to everyone who was here at the seminar, but did you get your money's worth? Yes. <laughs> Cheesecake alone, Bob. Yeah, it was worth the price of admission. Remember that this is this will be super top secret online for for you to view. And then if anyone else has any other suggestions for that, feel free to e if you email me, I will send you this in a word format and this in word and I'll change the laughing to laugh. If you'd like to do that, my ad email address is Roman oh. 381. And Tell us about the cake, Bob. Where do you get them from? The cake is that I make these cakes from scratch. And tell them where they can get one if they want one, Bob. Please come to our club anytime. Well, that's that's the practice. next thing. As vice president of membership for Top Toastmasters, there's two requirements to join our club. That you are completed your course manual, the CC, and that you are a dual member of another Toastmaster club. But you don't have to be a member of our club to come to our club to give your speech and get it evaluated by all our speakers. Now, I, I want to say is we, we have more members at top, but there was er, two area contests going on, and many of our members are yet either one of those area contests. And I'd like to introduce Virginia, because in two weeks, we'll let Virginia. Oh, the evaluations. Oh, thank you. Yes, in two weeks, we will be doing the same thing that we did tonight, only for the evaluation contest. So if you're also competing in the speech evaluation contest, plan on being back here in two weeks. Two weeks. So that's two weeks. Going to be the two Our next meeting. Our next meeting. I think you remember that each of you were given a judges. A humor judging <laughs> sheet, and that to look yeah. at that because in many cases there are sometimes ties. I went to a division contest, and for the humorous contest, number place number one, place number two, and place number three were tied. Oh my goodness! And the chief wow. judge decided basically who got what at the contest. So, concentrate. If you're not doing what the judge's sheet says you should be doing, you're, you won't score that well with the judges. So make sure that you do that. And now let's uh, 
Let's have Virginia. Just close us out, Virginia. Oh, okay. Thank you. I just want to thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. And again, everyone is welcome to come to our meetings. We meet the first and third Wednesday of every month right here in this room from 7 to 9. And if you want to get on the agenda, just email us and let us know, and you will get a very comprehensive evaluation. We, we typically have two people evaluate. Um, we have our own form that we use. We don't do the normal. We don't do table topics. We don't do all the other things. We focus on speeches and evaluations. And then we have a round robin after the two evalu evaluators. So if you're looking for help on a speech, it doesn't have to be for a contest, it can just be a regular speech. It could be your icebreaker, okay? So don't think that just because we're an advanced club, you have to be working in an advanced manual, all right? So we'd love to see you back again at a regular meeting. Thank you. Let's close. Let's close. <laughs>